All right, Sir Bandersnatch here, and as promised, I'm going to be teaching denizen scripting for Minecraft. So, if you are looking to use denizen to script your own Minecraft server, this is going to hopefully help you. That's my goal, at least. Um, the way I'm going to teach this is instead of splitting things things out into episodes where it covers one um, one area of the documentation like I've seen a lot I'm gonna make a project and we're going to kind of use all at once so I call it throwing you into the deep end but I think this project based learning may help some of you that are help having trouble learning denizen um, so it might be fast and furious but if you stick with it you will be okay so the first thing I want to show you uh, and you may have done this if you're already interested in denizen so what basically what denizen does is it's a plugin for Minecraft that lets you script really anything to make it do anything like a mod would do, but you don't need any mods. Um, I think it can do almost 99% of what mods can do. I haven't, I don't know, um, I haven't run into any restrictions yet that I know of. And so that's pretty powerful. It takes a little learning though. It's it's different than Java, but and you know some people that don't want to use Java to make mods because they're not programmers will gravitate towards Denizen and then Denizen maybe will be just as difficult and that's where it was for me a couple years ago but in the last year and a half I really dug my heels in and learned this thing and so I want to show you in this new approach to hopefully maybe make it better so for those of you that haven't yet I'll, I'll put this uh, link in the description and it is the documentation uh, beginner's guide at least and you should go through and read this and you can pause the video now and go do that if you haven't yet but the main things you need to do are setting up a local test server and then getting your uh, script editor working um, but really you should probably read all of this and um, I will be going over uh, much of it though but as I said in a very fragmented fashion that is using all of the different parts at once to show how they all can possibly work together, which may seem a little confusing, but I think you can build something faster this way and probably learn faster if you give it some time. Um, so do that. And then you'll have VS Code, you'll download that like in the documentation, the beginner, beginner's guide says, and you'll have a um, Denizen extension. You'll have your local server running and it will be reading uh, the scripts from the folder. So I'll start diving into this. Let's just do a quick little hello world. Um, as I said, this will be project learning, but I want to show you one um, one way how this works. So I'm going to make a little script um, just to show you how this works. So this is going to just be called test task and type task, type task. Sometimes the autofill in isn't very useful. All right, let's save this first. I think that. So we're going to save this into um, it, the scripts folder in your plugins folder, Denizen and scripts. That's where all the scripts will go. So we're using Denizen as a plugin when you initialize it on starter a server startup it will create a Denizen folder and a scripts folder for you so you're going to save all your scripts in here this one I'm going to call test task dot DSC DSC is just the extension that Denizen looks for it is just a YAML file but let's just put this in there save it in there so now I'll get hopefully this will allow me to finish this good type task script and then we're going to just narrate oh you could see it comes up it pops open tooltips form from the meta documentation, uh, which is helpful. I usually just go out to the documentation, which I'll show you, but um, here we go. This is just going to narrate. It's a command called narrate, and we're going to do hello world. So I'm going to save this, command s. It'll, I'll go to your file, save, but I'll be using command s most of the time. Go back to Minecraft and reload the plugin. X space reload. So all done this in commands in game are ex first. Uh, if you're using it in the client. So we're going to reload the Denizen plugin and then we're going to um, X to run a command. We're going to run this task, test, test task, 
and it says hello world thankfully that worked good so that's a simple way that this works the main thing I wanted to show you though is that this is YAML so it has to be in a syntax that's exactly as it wants it to be you know all the spacing has to be right four spaces here and here and here and the colons have to be here but you'll get used to that over time and when it blows up it'll tell you which line is not working and you can go fix it but you'll get used to what that all entails and I'll tell you about it um, where it needs things but you know it needs this uh, this colon it needs these colons it needs these spaces it needs that hyphen and the space um, so the developers doesn't have it set up that it will read these files and it puts them in the memory and loads them on your server so that's pretty fast development in my opinion you don't have to restart the server or anything like that but let's let let's write a, a real script here so we're gonna jump right into the deep end like I said and going to script up a a um, RPG server and uh, when I well, when I say script up it's gonna take well it's, it's taking me 10 years to do so but um, it's gonna take a while but we're going to just tackle it one chunk at a time and hopefully it helps you. Um, my ulterior motive is to show you the greatness of Denizen and Minecraft and how great a RPG server can be and hopefully convince you to come over to mine and help me with mine. Um, you know, more people to work on things, the faster it can get done and the better it can get done because I'm the only one working on it and it's taking forever. So here and there I will be advertising for you to come and do that but hopefully either way this helps you all right so let's delete this file we don't need that I am actually going to delete it out of my um, a folder to here we don't need this anymore uh, delete it and it's still in memory so it's actually still gonna work until I X reload now it's there are no scripts as you can read here and we looked at the the beginner, beginner's guide. You're going to read that, um, and then you also will want a link to the meta documentation. Um, the meta documentation I go to all the time when I'm scripting, and you'll you'll need it and use it. Uh, the other documentation that you'll need uh, or help is besides for myself is De uh, Discord. I'll put a link to the Denizen Discord. You want to make sure you go to the Denizen channel and you can ask a question right here. Or you can hit Command F and it brings open the the search and you can search for for things here, um, such as Command Script. Let's see what comes up. You can find all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so use that. I'll be in there too. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, I like as I said, we're doing an RPG server, and I need for my RPG server a, a set of attributes. And attributes by that I mean your strength, your intelligence, or your dexterity. I boil them down to those three things that you'll use for skill checks and things like that. But how do we do this? Um, and that's what this project will hopefully help you with. I don't know if this is the best way, but I'm trying to do it the best I can. So let's do a new file, and we're going to call it, we'll just save it right away, attributes.dsc in the scripts folder. Remember, denizen, plugins, denizen scripts and you can create as many subdirectories in there as you wish and organize them however you want you can have as many files as you want as many scripts as you want as long as they're all named um, uniquely but um, so even saving it in there it's not in Minecraft yet until I reload the plugin so they are actually there on my local server but once I reload it, then it will be there. However, there's nothing in here. So we're going to start right away with a command. So I quickly just showed you a task script. We're going to show you a command script. So what I, I mean by these command and task scripts? Well, in the meta documentation, if you go under language explanations, and let's just search for command script containers. Okay, here it is. So script containers, there are a number of script containers that do different things, one being a command, one being a task, and I'll go through a bunch of different ones today. But this, um, we'll start with the command script container because I'm thinking, well, we need the player some way to to get that information, to type in a command to open up a, a graphical user interface to see and manipulate their attributes. All right, so on a command is uh, not a bad way to start for this one. So let's go to our attributes.dsc and make a command. Um, 
let's go back to the documentation and see what it needs. So you can see everything that it requires here. And I'll show you, um, I'll just get started making this. The few things that a command script needs is a name. So this is going to be the attributes command. And I underscore and put the last name of the script container right, or as the last word, as the name of the type of script. Just so I can, um, when I'm glancing at them, I kind of know what they are. But this really tells Denison what it type it is. It's type command. And then the name is another required attribute, and that will be attributes. And then we'll make a script out of uh, when that's the script that will be run when that command um, is issued. And you can see other things, a description that shows um, usage aliases. We'll do some of this more of this, but I want to show you a bare bones one to start with. And the script, uh, again, let's just do a narrate, and we'll say this script has run. All right, so if I save that, and notice I made, again, the colons where they need to be, the, the um, four spaces. This has to be, this command has to be written out this way, a hyphen, and that. But we'll get all used to that, don't worry. It looks like gibberish right now, but the more you do it, the more it becomes familiar. All right, the next thing we need to do is X reload. Reloads all the scripts, and it doesn't look like there's any errors. And our scripts should be relo reloaded. So if I type slash attributes, you can see it's that one down there. Now, um, I said everything needs to start with X. That's if you run... Um, a denizen command, but if you're running a command you created, you just write the command, of course, and it says this script has run, so everything's working. Good. Now, um, the way that I want to display my attributes to the player is through a user interface, and for my inter user interface for this case, at least, I'm going to use a book. I'm going to override a book to prefill it with text that's going to have its, its uh, interface. So that is going to be uh, another thing. Um, so the first thing I want to do is break this the functionality in, into a task that's going to be run and that's going to um, call the book. So let's just create another task here. Um, attributes, let's call it attributes task. You know, I might change these names and refactor this as I go. But this is uh, another type of task called, or another type of script called the task. And this is one of the simplest ones there are. Narrate this. Narrate this script has run. Now I'll put that there like that. Now we don't need this. We're actually going to run that script from. We're going to run that script from our command. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm breaking out this functionality into a different task. The reason I do that is. It's a functional way to program, I think, that now this task has its own um, contained information, and I can call it from anywhere in the whole program, I mean, the whole game program that'll be running when I'm done. And I don't just need that command to, to run it. Um, in this case, the command is one of the ways to run it. Um, so it's a, it's a way to break out your functionality. Um, let's just save that and run it. I like to test things like this if, when I can. And now if I type attributes, this script has run with the exclamation mark. All right, so it's doing the same thing pretty much. It's just running it through a task. Uh, but that way, um, like I said, you're breaking out, you're organizing your, your your information differently. And I'm showing you another another type of script container. And if we go back to our documentation, um, we looked at a command script. Container. So there's a number of types of script containers. Command and task are big ones you'll use. Let's do a task script container. There it is, and it shows you what it needs. Definitions are another big part of it that we'll be using, which I'll show you shortly, but um, it's not required. And like I said, we're going to be opening up a book. So let's go back to our code, and we're going to make a book container. Let's see, a book script container. There it is. And re so we, if we need to know how that works, let's make up. So in this case, the book is going to just be a template to have open up um, a templated script, but the information added to it will be dynamic, and I'll show you what that means shortly here. All right, so it's let's call it attributes book, and it's a type is going to be book. So this part is pretty consistent where it has the type, 
and if we go back the um, back to here, we'll see what information it needs. Okay. Let's see, it needs a type, a book, and title. We'll call it attributes. This is just some stuff to get started. Like I said, it'll be set dynamically. Um, type attributes, um, author, me. In this case, it's a tag called player.name, we'll say. And I'll teach you what tags are soon. Um, well, I think it has to be signed, true, and then you can always set a debug too to see what's going wrong. Debug true, false is to limit the amount of debug information. Don't worry about what that is yet. Um, and then the text that's going to be in the book. Now in this case, we don't really need to add anything because we're going to add it dynamically. And let's do that next. But in this case, um, we have a book container, a book script container set up. So this is a book uh, that's blank. That's called attributes. Let's open the book. So uh, the way to do that is um, you can give the player a book uh, in this task and open it and have it show right away. And the way you do that is with a mechanism. So we have an, we have done um, we've talked about script containers. We talked a little bit about commands. Um, let me let me just go over commands a little bit more. Run is a command, a narrator command. You can see it by the hyphen and the it turns it purple. Um, commands are, so we are, right now we're looking at the script containers in language explanations. These, there's different categories of things. There's events and mechanisms and tags and commands. Those are the four that you use the most. Um, let's look at the commands quick. So it breaks out into commands. You can see the different subcategories here with these jump links, which are nice. Um, I can see that the, um, Sometimes I don't know what they are, but if you, if you know what category they're in. We are going to go to uh, narrate. Let's say we wanted to see that one. Let's see, where is narrate? Pretty soon here it'll come up. And I just do a command F to look for what I'm looking for. I put the hyphen there to kind of narrow it down. You can see that there's 42. But here's the narrate command, so it can tell you what it can do. Um, we're, we did this one, narrate hello world. You know, whatever text you put into that between the um, the print, uh, the quotation marks will show up in chat. Here it's putting, it says hello there, and then it's giving it a target. You can read through this. We'll do all of this eventually. You know, set different tags to come in and dynamic information. Um, and then the other one we used was run. So let's look, run, here it is. This is the run command. So there's a lot of commands and you can read through this or, you know, search for them. I know some of these already. Run you'll use a lot because it runs commands. Uh, tasks that you have set up. Um, and there's a lot of different information here, but we're just doing a simple run like this one here. So going back to the code, uh, like I said, run art the task. The oh, run this task. Hopefully that makes sense. And we have a book. Now we need to open that book, right? And we're just going to open up kind of like a blank book for now because we don't have any information set. So to do that, um, we'll leave this narrate here for now, but we're going to adjust. Now adjust is another command, as you can see, but what we're doing is adjusting the player, myself, to show book. Now this is a pretty advanced one, um, and what we're going to show uh, the attributes book. So we're adjusting sh the show book, and we're um, going to show this book here that we made, which is just a blank book. It's just a template book. And then what is it going to show? But in here, there's mechanisms for book pages. And we're going to put an equal sign, and then it's, you can just say test, I guess, in here for now, just so to get something to show up. And that will open a book, book, book up there. Let's just do it, and then I'll explain what everything means. Let's reload and run the command, and we have a book with the word test in it. Um, my, my text that I put right there. So let's look at the, let's start in the beginning, let's look at what an adjust command is. Uh, this is pretty advanced stuff, we're jumping way into the deep end, but adjust is a command, right? We know that. It's the first one, alphabetical order here. What it does is it adjusts an object's mechanism. 
all right so it's it's when you need to change something about an object in the world right uh, here we're adjusting the player in this case this one's a little more uh, abstract or hard to understand um, we're adjusting the show book mechanism of the player and we're giving the this um this book as the book that it's showing and then we're adjusting the book that we're showing to have this text so this one's very confusing so let's look at mechanisms you'll be using this a lot um, so we did show book that's here displays a book to the player um, we're adjusting the player to show a book and that's and we're the book that we have set up the template for and then the other one was book pages I think it was <clears throat> Here, so now we're adjusting the book and changes the text of the book for what we put in there. Um, and the way you can set without using the adjust command when you're, you can set it up in brackets here too. So this is a more advanced way to set it dynamically, some mechanisms. Um, yeah, well, sorry guys, this is pretty advanced stuff. But trust me, if you follow, keep following the syntax and over and over, it'll make sense. You know, at first you're just going to type it out like you see it and it won't make any sense it'll just work and then you'll just keep doing it over and over and I encourage you to type it out if you can without just copy and pasting because I think you learn better that way but this is how that works this is how you change the text of a book all right but we don't want to show test right we want to show some attributes um, let's just show you another command we're going to show the define command let's look it up now, I know a lot of these means, but I still have to look them up all the time. All right, we have to make sure we're under commands, and we'll search for define. Maybe I passed it. Define, here it is. Define sets up a variable inside of your queue. So here it is, creates a temporary variable in, inside a script queue. You'll definitely want to get used to what these are. We'll use them all the time, so it's good to read this. But you know, you got to do it. I always find you have to do it and then get and get the gist of it, and then keep doing it and diving deeper. So for now, just know that it sets up a variable, and um, it can the variable can be many things. Uh, let's set up the variable. Uh, just set it up as test and test def it's something whatever we want this is the name of it and this is what the variable is so we'll leave it as this for now and we'll put it in here so to call the definition you have to wrap it in this syntax here the caret the bracket and then ending bracket and ending caret just like that and then the name of the variable let's see if this works I always make mistakes so sometimes I really never know reload it call our command this script has run so see we're kind of breaking out some of this we don't we're gonna have a lot of information in a book possibly and we don't want to just cram it in this one line you know, we want to break it out so we can kind of see what we're working on so we're gonna even break it out even further um, so going back to our goal of showing um, showing attributes is uh, as I'm calling them we they're gonna be strength intelligence and dexterity right um, and we could put that all in, right in here and hard code it right in this space. But I want to break it out into a further um, area called a data script container. What is a data script container? Let's go find out. All right. Language explanations. Let's go to search for data script containers. And you can read here what they are. Um, and it's basically just a container for some data. It doesn't really do anything except it gets called by other scripts. And of course, we're going to create a data script container with our attributes data. And it's going to um, be, think of it as a template for what we want an attribute to look like. It's not going to contain the actual like values that my strength value, but it's going to create the template of different information that can be there. Um, so this is, a, I think, an important concept to understand. And it may not make sense make sense at first, but as you use them, it'll make sense. And I think this example will help start that. So just know, and here's the setup, and I will write this right now. So let's make our attributes data 
colon. So it's set up all just like any script container. And then we just need a key. And the key will be attribute. And this key we can call whatever we want. So we're starting kind of like our, our JSON um, uh, key value pairs. So attributes will have, what, three keys, strength, and oh, let's put the colon in right there. So that's correct. And dexterity and intelligence. So again, these can be called whatever you want. In fact, these will never even be shown to the player in game. They're just internal. So if you wanted to call them something a little more specific or whatever you need to, um, they'll just be called from inside the, the task. And then we can set up even more keys within this, uh, such as, well, maybe we could need a display name. So this key I'm naming whatever I want. This could be anything. Um, and we'll call it strength. I'm going to put it in quotes. I uh, usually one word doesn't need to be in quotes, uh, but if it has a space, then it needs quotes. But I put it in that just because I know, then I kind of know and they're consistent. Um, and it will need a starting value, right? When we set the first initial value before their strength starts going up, when they first log into the game, they may need a starting value. And that will be an integer of 10, we'll just say for now. And then a description we can pull in. And you know, this is going to be all the keys that you need this template of this attribute strength to carry. You know, it could be many, many different things. I'm just putting a couple things in that um, I'm thinking right now. And we can come back and add more later. Your physical uh, abilities, I don't know. Alright, so we're going to do the same for these other two here. So we're getting three keys with each with three have their own keys. And you can nest them as many as you need. Right? Keeping the syntax right, your speed and uh, agility. And this is intelligence. Your mental abilities. <laughs> okay. And I'll probably come back later and make these more descriptive, but I'm just trying to get functionality working right now. You know, these numbers could be maybe different if you need them to start at different levels, whatever you think for your game. All right, so now we have a data script container. So that contains uh, the, the starting information we need it uh, for, like the template, I call it, for our each attribute. But how do we get that into our book, right? Um, and instead of trying to sugarcoat everything too, let's just get right into hard, hard, complex stuff here. We're going to do a for each loop. Now, if you're familiar with programming and development, you know what that is already, probably. And Denizen has that as well. But what it does is it loops over a grouping of information and does something to that information and and gives you that information, whatever you've done to it. So the best way is with an example. For each is a command. Let's look at our commands. Go to commands for each, and there it is for each, and it tells you everything it can do. Loops through a list, um, and there's all kinds of cool stuff it can do, which we'll get into. Um, so for now, let's just let's just do it. Let's just do it for each. So what are we going to for each? We're going to loop over all of our data. So we've created our data that we're going to loop over. So we will need to loop over our script. So this is how we loop over that script. We, that's a script um, tag. Let's talk about tags. So we've looked at commands, we looked at mechanisms. We'll definitely go over these again, don't worry. We'll look at mechanisms. That's a pretty hard one to understand. Uh, tags are hard to understand too. but a script tag is a tag, and we're looking for the um, the data key one. I mean, I know this one already. I, you know, I had to search for these things to find out what they were and learn what they were. But a script tag with a data key of a certain data key name. You know, here's that tag that we'll be using. I, I know that it doesn't make much sense from looking at this, and that's probably the hardest part about Denizen is let's just like, how do you know to do what you want to do? And I guess that's what I'm trying, the gap I'm trying to fill. Um, the developers might hate me for that, but I figured that this would be helpful. So the script we're going to use is 
this script here, right? This is the data script we're going to look at. And this could be any script, but this is the one we want to use. I use this often, most often for like, yeah, data scripts or like item scripts. Yeah, mostly data scripts because I put everything into a data script that I need to be that way. And I'll explain why. But then we need our data key, just like the, the tag I just looked up. And this is how tags work. You have your object you're going to fil filter on, um, I guess we'll say, with a tag. So it's dot and then the data key. And you can see that this caret always stays at the end. It like encapsulates this this tag. So the tag runs this way. But the data key that we're looking for, and now we have brackets, is attribute. And that's this key right here, that data key. So we're looking at this script and we're looking at that key, and that's how you do that. And so, what this um, piece of, this list that we're looping through, remember if the for each says we're looping through a list, the list is the list of this key's attributes, which is strength, dexterity, and intelligence that we've created. Um, and remember, huh, you gotta keep your your tabulation, uh, right, four spaces there and all that kind of stuff, so just follow what I'm doing. Um, with these colons and everything, and you'll get used to it over time. So that will loop through all of our attributes and spit out the information. Are we still on? Let's see, going back to for each, going to commands, looking for for each. I want to show you this because how you set up a for each is very important. I'm um, looking at the examples. I love it when they have examples. But you see it needs to be as and then an enumerator that it's going to or an iterator that it's going to iterate over and then a colon at the end. This has to be this way, all right? So, let's go back and put that in. Um, just know that. So, it's going to say as and then um, let's just call it this at. So, this this thing right here, I'm making up as my iterator. Um, this part is required. So as colon, whatever iterator I come up with, and then a colon. So it needs this colon. And then when you go down to the new line, you have to put four spaces in again. And VS Code automatically, when you tab, puts four spaces in. All right, so we're going to be iterating over our attributes, and it's going to loop three times, once for strength, once for dexterity, once for intelligence. If you'd create another key, it would loop over that one. Um, and it's going to spit out this attribute. And the way that you call that, I'm going to narrate it for now. The narrate is a great tool for testing. But just like with our definitions being in the, these caret bracket things, uh, the enumerator uh, iterator thing in Minjing there has to be in one as well because it's kind of like a definition. And so that's going to spit out each one of these objects here. Alright, so let's test it out. So it's going to narrate that um, let's not do this. Let's comment this out. So all you have to do is hit, I put my cursor on that line and, and press command um, forward slash. And on a PC, I guess it would be control and forward slash. And it comments that out. So that we don't want to display the book for now because we just want to test this iteration here. So you can see that this is looped in here. And you can see how this one's no longer um, being looped because it's not tabbed in. It's not spaced in. So that one just runs independently once. Everything inside here is going to run three times. And sometimes I don't know how many times it's going to run if there's a lot of data. Uh, you know, it could have hundreds. But I know it's going to run three times. All right, so it's going to spit out our three keys there. Let's go back to the game. And of course, we X, reload, and then we do our command. And there they are, the three they're maps, because there are many pieces of data um, objects. But you can see our display names in there, our value, and our description. Well, how do we see... Um, you can also use key. Key's one of the things that are in the documentation. We can narrate the key, and that's just going to show the key, which is the first item there. These are the keys to that, uh, to attribute, the strength. X. So let's just save that, and X reload, and attributes, and we just get the three keys. Now, <clears throat> if we wanted to get more specific information, we can. And I like to first break them out into definitions. So let's define our display name. And this name, again, I'm just giving it a name, right? I can say that I can say whatever I want here. Display name happens to be specific for what I want. And we're going to say that the display name's definition is going to be this attribute. And now we're going to say, well, we don't want the whole attribute. 
well, let's just, let's just do this here. We'll so show you what it does for now. It's always good to kind of like test things out. Display name. All right, so I first put, it's running through strength, right? It's grabbing the key, which is strength, this whole key. It's going to shove it into this display name definition that I'm giving it right there. And now I'm going to narrate it out. All right, so I'm going to narrate out each one strength dexterity. I'm doing this step by step just to hopefully make more sense. So you can see it does the same thing, right? I just broke it down into a definition. Um, but I don't want to get the whole key. I just want to get a part of it. You know, I just want to get the display name. So the uh, the de this the um, Denizen developers are great. This what do you do to get that key? You just use dot get. It's a tag. We're going to get the key display name because that's another key. Display name is a key to strength. So we're going to get that key because it's going to get this object as this attribute right here, this definition. It's going to get this object. But which key do you want? We want the display name. All right, so now this will be entirely different. Let us first go to the tags and just look at it, right? Look at the get. It gets a, let's see here, find get that's for a cubite tag, there's a list tag get, and it gets a number. It returns an element of the value specified by the supplied context. Um, you can use words too, like the, the key you can use. It looks like, here we go, you get the key that you want. So that's where that's explained. And that's another tag. So tags you kind of just use like that. You you put them in, a, you get a list and you use a tag on it to filter the information that you want. And here we're getting display names. So this, let's get rid of this. We don't need this. We see that that works. Go back over to Minecraft. Reload. There they are, our three display names. You can see they're capitalized now because they're the display names. If we were to get the description, we're going to define it first. Now, you know, the names of my definitions happen to be the same name as the key just because it's the script to me, you know, this could be whatever you want here. Descriptions. Just as long as you change it here. So this has to be the same as that. Um, but this is referencing what I called it here, right? Um, I can copy and paste this since it's going to be kind of the same thing. And now I'm going to get the key a description from each one of our attributes right there. So hopefully that makes sense. Writing these tags can be a little confusing, especially since you have to put this, you're putting this dot get tag inside of this caret, but that's how they work. Um, and you'll get used to how that all works. If you're going to chain on another one, you know, whatever it, whatever it was, you would just keep going like that. <clears throat> and we'll keep, we'll use tags tons. So so we're going to narrate display name, um, and you know you can narrate display name and you can narrate the description. You can put them in two different not lines, and uh, or you can put them in the same line in this case. So there you go. No space in between or anything, but that's fine. So now we need to get that stuff in our book, right? So we'll do this a little differently. We don't need to narrate it out. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And then let's um, also change these back. This is a little... I don't like that. All right. So I just wanted to demonstrate how these names don't have to be the same. They're just whatever you want. All right. So we want to get these into our book. I'm going to add them to a list. Okay. Let's create a list here. Well, I like to instantiate a list near the top. So I'm going to just create a definition for um, the attributes list. It's called attributes list. And it's just going to instantiate it as a list. So this is just an object called a list. Every every object has a name, uh, what it's called, like this is a list object, there could be a cubite object, there could be a script object, uh, an element. Um, so I'm just kind of like instantiating this, I want to call it this, outside of the loop because I want to add it to the loop each time. So we're going to define again here. Now this is pretty advanced stuff, I think, at least it was when I discovered it. I was like, holy crap, this is cool. Um, we're going to redefine it each time and add something to it. Now there's a number of ways you can add something to it, um, and this is just one way. In this case, it works. 
So we're going to add, redefine the attribute list. It's going to be the same, except it's also going to now uh, contain uh, the display name. Display name. So I think that will work, and then we can uncomment that. And now this, the content of our pages is now going to be this list. Okay. Um, let's just run it, and I'll come back and explain it. Reload, always reload, and then run our command. And there are our three display names. Capitalize, so our, it's pulling from our data, our data attribute, uh, our data script container, and putting it into um, our book. So pretty advanced stuff for your first lesson. But like I said, I don't want to just sugarcoat everything and just explain what tags are fully. And you know, let's just combine them all together and show all the, how they all work together, right? All right, we can do a little better, right? We can um, put a a line after that, then. And I know this is the new line uh, tag. Let's reload and show that. So now they're all in different lines. Now I just happen to know that one. That's a tag. So all these different tags that you can use. Um, I'll just search for it here. You know, here it says new line, but it's under character. Um, let's see. What is its category base, I guess? But again, these jump links kind of show all the different types there are. And you'll get to know the new line one. You know, that one will be pretty common. All right, so we have them broken out into new lines. So this is somewhat useful, right? We have our our um, our names displaying. But it's not really dynamic, right? Like, So what is our strength? We have the starting value. Uh, the starting value is what we give to players when they first log in. But then it goes up. So let's set the starting value for players that first log in. Going back to our code here. So we have something that that gets the um, information. In fact, let's call it the get task. But then we need to update it here, of course. So that gets the attributes. <clears throat> let's do an attribute attribute set task. That's a nice, see, that's a nice way to break the functionality out, right? You can clearly see what they do by, by doing it this way. And this way, any part of the script, your whole script, your whole world mechanics can call these tasks. Same way. Um, all right, so how do we set them? That is a good question. We are going to use flags. Flags are a core component to Denizen, and they are, well, let's look up the documentation here. It's a command as one thing, to set it at least. Um, let's look up flag. Here it is. So you can read this. Now I know that a lot of this won't make sense when you're fresh to this information, but um, as you use it over and over, it'll become more useful and make sense that like reading this documentation, I constantly come back to it. Like here's how to, to um, if you don't want to reset it, rewrite the, the flag, but just add to it, you know, you can, you can create a list by doing that, but we'll go over all that. Right now we're just going to set a simple flag, and that's going to be the starting value, right? Um, so here's how that goes. It's a command, flag. Well, let's, yeah, let's, we're going to flag the player. So you can flag many things. You can flag the server, you can flag the player. I'll explain what those other ones are for. I mostly flag the player these days. But we're going to flag the player with our flag, and we're going to call it attribute dot uh, strength in this case dot level. I like to kind of break them out into, um, you know, level belongs to strength and strength belongs to attribute. It's kind of like these keys again, this same idea like we have here, keys going down. And I'll keep touching on these points to make more sense. You know, you could just have it be called strength and without any dots, and that would be fine too. And to set it, we put a colon, and then we're going to set, we could set it to 10. All right. So this is going to be, anytime we call this, t this task, it's going to set the players flag to 10. Now this is a little too simplistic though. We want to make it dynamic. We already have their starting value here. So how do we call that? Well, you, maybe you have figured this out, but all we need to do is look at the script data key. We already have a script, so we're going to do the same thing we did when we looped. We're going to do a script. Which script? The attributes data. 
and then we want a, a tag called the data key. So it'll get used to using this. If you use data scripts a lot, you'll be used to doing this kind of thing. The data key attribute, but we want to get to the next key, and that's going to be strength. Right? We're looking at the strength one in this example. See, so there's the dot. So that's looking at that data key attribute, and then the next data key of strength, and we separate them by dots. As if you'd read in the data key tag um, documentation, it says that. So we're looking at the strength, and then um, we want to look at one more key, right? The starting value. I think that's what I called it. That has to be the same name as that. So what this is going to print out is 10. And the way we can test that, you know, we don't want to necessarily flag, let's not flag us yet. Let's narrate it out, the good old narrate um, testing. Go back and just reload and then just run that task. I like to test things out by, um, by uh, running the task like this. And it should say 10, good. So because it's what it's doing is it's narrating out this data value right here. Um, but we're going to flag them that, all right? So that's fine. But we only want to flag them their starting value when they have not had any strength yet. So let's say they've been playing a while and their strength's up to 50. We don't want to flag them not back down to 10. So the way we do that, there's probably many ways, but we're going to check if they have the flag already. And if they don't, then, then we will flag them. If they do, we will just skip right over it. And the way we do that is with an F command. There's the if command. Let's look at the documentation. It's a command. And here is a good way, reason why I um, use that hyphen in front. Oops. Because, yeah, let's get to it first. Eventually I will here. If, okay. Why I use the hyphen in front when I'm doing this find command? Because there's probably a lot of the word ifs in this whole document, um, and that gets me just that little bit more specific to find it. So anyway, here's the if command, and basically what you're doing is trying to come up with a truthy, they call it statement, and if that statement is true, it runs. I know that sounds confusing, it took me a while to really get what that is, but we create a statement that if it's true, then the code inside of it will run. And there's all kinds of ways you can use this, but here I'll show you how we're going to use it now. So if the tag player, the player being me, the one that's running this task, <clears throat> and we're going to use a flag called, or a tag called has flag, and that's in the documentation. Basically that's just a truthy statement about um, whatever flag you put into it. And in this case is the flag that we are looking for. I'm going to copy and paste that in there. If player has that flag, yeah, let's comment this out, we're not going to do it yet. If player has that flag, we'll narrate, I have the strength flag. And I know I, okay, I already do have it because I tested this already, so I'm going to have to actually take it away from myself. Let's just run it though, because I already have it, so it's going to show. Or not. If player has flag, I guess I don't have that flag yet, good. If player has flag, so nothing's happening, it's not narrating anything, so I don't have that flag. Now there's another tag you can add on to like switch it so that if it, so this is still going to be true if I don't have the flag, I'm putting a dot not at the end. Um, both of these here are tags, let's quick look at them just to show you the power of using the documentation. Um, has flag. So a flaggable object dot has flag and then whatever flag you're looking for. In this case, um, the flaggable object was a player, just how I read it. The other one is dot not. Um, we'll get to it. There it is. Whatever element you're using in dot not, it's the opposite of that. So it's just a clean way to say instead of writing an else statement. Um, you know, here's an example of that. You could do Yes, I have the flag. So else statements are written like this. Narrate. 
I do not have the f strength flag. Um, now if I reload that, it should say that last statement. So that's how um, if else works. If this statement right here is true, whatever it is, use your colon, make sure the colon's on there, then it will do this. If it doesn't, then it will do that. But as I said, I'm just looking for one case in, right now, so the dot not works, and then keeping these tags, you have to put them inside of the chevron. That's the, one of the confusing things, is keeping that all straight. Um, so this should say have the flag. So now what we want to do, of course, if they don't have the flag, we want to flag them. So we want to get this up under here, and it has to be indented, contained in that. I mean, then you can continue to run other code if you want to. Here, let's see. I'll put this in there for now. And um, so this code just runs outside of the if. This will run no matter what, because it's not in this if statement. See, because this is inside of the if statement, because it's indented, right? Um, so if the player has the flag, doesn't have the flag, attribute strength level, flag them that they do have it. And what are you going to flag them? That amount we gave them, the 10. Else, do do nothing. We'll skip right over it, all right? Um, and then I'm just showing this to narrate that because, um, just to show you, you can continue to do other things in the script outside of this. We'll have a lot of different if statements and different things and sometimes nested ones that keep going inside of this. But um, so that's an example of how that can keep going. And we'll show you that as, as we keep moving. So I want to run this. Let's see, when do I want to run this? Maybe when I I do the attribute command up here. Because we have to have a time to run it. Um, we probably will run it in a different way once we get this more developed. But for now, let's just run it here. Um, we do the same thing, run. We probably want to run it before we do the book, the uh, interface. So that'll set it. So that's saying once you run the command, we're first going to set your attributes. And it's only going to set them if you don't have them. Then it's going to show them. Um, so that should work. It shouldn't set, it should not set them yet for me until. Well, no, it should. I'm sorry. It should set them. So next reload. Now we're going to do our command. And it's not showing anywhere. It's set it underneath the hood. Let's. What you can do is you can do a narrate command with the x here. Player dot flag attribute. Let's see one t attribute dot strength dot level. I think it was. So basically, what I'm doing is I can narrate things in the game here. Just to test things out. So I'm narrating if I have that flag. Let's see. And this is 10. Good. So it's set that flag underneath the hood. So now I have a strength of 10. We're not doing anything with that information yet, but it's there. All right. Let us look at this again. So we're setting, um, and we can do this once for each attribute. But guess what? I'm not going to write this out three times, right? What am I going to do instead? You've guessed it, a for each loop. Same thing as this. So I'm just going to copy it from there. Because we can set it each time. So now we don't need the strength level. We need this attribute. Actually, what we're going to use, remember the key? That works well for this one. Key. Remember, remember the key just brings out the first key right there. So that's going to fill that key with strength. So attribute dot key dot level strength dot level, or in the case of dexterity dexterity. So that you can see why that's a lot more condensed than all right condensed than doing that three times. We don't need to do it three times. We can just loop over our data script. That's the value of or the the uh, advantage of making these data script containers. Um, so I'll loop over each one of our, our attributes, strength, dexterity, intelligence. And if the player doesn't have that flag yet, set it. Um, you know, and we could do something like if they do have it, we could um, add to it or, or something like that. 
but this is just a setting uh, initial. Um, we'll probably update this and refactor to do all of our setting, initializing and upgrading, etc. But for now, this will be good. Um, so now, okay, let me to to show you. I'm not going to reload. I'm going to show you if I test out my intelligence level. I shouldn't have any. Yeah, see, it just comes back with, it, it repeats the tag. It doesn't say 10, so I don't have that one. Um, but if I run, sorry, let's reload. I forget if I did, and run our command again. Now it's going to give us all three of our things um, behind the scenes. Now it didn't say it, but now if I go back and show my intelligence, it should say 10. See? So by opening up my menu in this case, it triggered that set attribute to task and gave me my initial values, but only if I didn't have them, right? We don't, again, we don't want to set a player's strength to 10 if they have 50. All right, so how do we display this? Now this is, we want to use it in the game. Our first way to do that is by displaying it to them. Um, and we're going to display it up here, right? I hope you're following a lot, because this is quite, quite complicated, I think, for a beginner. Um, and if you're, you know, an intermediate user, actually, I consider myself intermediate. But if you're intermediate, um, maybe it'll help clear up some things. All right, so we need to, um, we want to get their value here. So we're going to define another, um, let's call it level, uh, their level. And what is the level going to be? It's going to be that flag. So we're going to write out player.flag, brackets, which flag, attribute, dot, remember we have our key, dot, level. All right, so the key again is when it's looping over every attribute, these are your keys, your first key here. You could get this, you could get this, you could get this, whatever you're trying to get. In this case, we just need that because we want this to say attribute, dot, strength, dot level, which is the flag we're giving it. So now we're going to read the flag, and we're going to read it into our um, into our GUI, our GU book. Um, let's see. Let's. I'm going to put this in the wrong place. I'm just going to move this up here. I'm going to do that. And now we need to display it right here. So I'm going to output our definition. So we define level here, and here I'm reading it with that tag. That's how you'll do that a lot. So get used to writing that, um, how you write out a, a definition. So now, let's, well, let's take a look what it's going to do. Attributes. There we go. We got all of them showing up. Strength 10, Dexterity 10, Intelligence 10. Um, it doesn't look very pretty right now, but it's showing it. So to make it look a little more pretty, you know, all we have to do is put a colon and a space in there. Um, reload it, show it up. Oops, and we need to make sure we put this. Whenever Remember when I said it, whenever you have spaces and such, you have to have quotes to make so it doesn't blow up. Um, you put the quotes around the whole part of the whole element um, here. That should work. Reload. There we go, colon, that, colon value. And we, of course, want to raise these at some point, but I think we're at a good stopping point. I think next time we'll show how to raise these and, and get them in other ways, but it's organized pretty nicely. You know, everything's segmented out into what it needs to do. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, like I, like I said, this is pretty complex stuff for a beginner, but um, we'll keep working on this and we'll come up with a fully fledged attribute system and a fully fledged uh, RPG mechanics game at some point, but we'll just keep adding to it. Um, thank you. I'll talk to you next time.